Hello! You're about to watch a short video from my 7 day trip in North Korea. Now before it starts, let me tell you 5 quick facts about traveling in North Korea. First off, you are not allowed to travel on your own. You must go on a pre-arranged tour that lasts anywhere from 1 to 10 days. Second, they take away your passport and your local guides monitor you for the whole trip. They take you to various locations at specific times and they only show you what they want you to see. And wandering on your own under any circumstances is not allowed. Third, every time you want to take a picture of anything, you need to ask your guides for permission. And taking pictures of soldiers, workers, construction sites and many other things is forbidden. Fourth, the leaders are considered as gods in North Korea and any sign of disrespect towards a statue, an image or even a picture of them is a grave offense. And fifth, the only place where you can behave more or less freely is the hotel where you're staying, which is situated on an island. However, you can still get into trouble even there. For example, two weeks before my trip to North Korea, an American student was sentenced to 15 years in prison for trying to steal a poster from the hotel. Now that being said, I feel like many documentaries and videos have been made about the politics of North Korea, whereas I simply wanted to make a video that would show you how your day-to-day -day life would look if you went there as a tourist. So I didn't really want to offer my opinion about whether things were staged or honest or good or bad. So please judge for yourself and take everything with a little pinch of salt. I hope you enjoy it and uh, cheers! I've always been very interested in North Korea because it seemed to be one of the most unique and mysterious countries in the whole world. And for the past two and a half years, I've spent most of my time traveling and had the chance to visit over 45 different countries around the world. But the more I traveled, the more I wanted to visit North Korea and see it for myself. So this year, I simply couldn't wait any longer and booked a seven day tour across the country. After a few months of waiting, I finally got on a flight to Beijing and went to the office of my tour agency for some briefing. Then I came back to my hotel room and packed my bags. The next morning, I woke up at 5 a.m. and went to the airport to take a flight that would change me forever. Okay, we're finally leaving the airport. Going towards the bus. Once we landed in Pyongyang, we were met by two North Korean guides who would accompany us for the whole trip and every single one of our actions had to be approved by them. I just got off the bus and I'm finally going to my hotel. This is the lobby. Oh man, it looks pretty good. This is it. Two beds, a phone, a TV. I'm finally in North Korea. We'll see what happens in the coming few days, but I mean, it's definitely one of the most interesting trips I've done to date, and I can't wait to see what's, what's up next for me. On our first day, we went deep underground for a ride on the Pyongyang Metro, which is the deepest subway system in the world. This was supposed to be a good chance to interact with the local people, but everyone seemed to be afraid to even look at us. Every time I turned around, I'd see people quickly turning their heads away as if they were never looking at me. After the metro ride, we visited the Ark of Triumph, which was built in 1982 to commemorate Korean independence from Japan. There were quite a lot of people busy with their daily lives. Some kids were even playing football and the tourists were allowed to join in. After dinner, I went to see a North Korean movie at the local movie theater. So I just came to see a movie at a cinema in Pyongyang about life in Pyongyang. It's kind of like a comedy co-authored by a foreigner who's been working with North Korea for the past 22 years and obviously some studios in North Korea. It's going to be extremely exciting and uh, yeah, I'm at a cinema in North Korea and that's something really cool. On the bus ride back home, we saw thousands of people practicing for a large North Korean parade.
The next day I took part in the Pyongyang Marathon, which was begun in 1981. It was only the third year that the marathon has been open to amateur runners, and there were over a thousand tourists running 10, 21 or even 42 kilometers. A week before my trip to North Korea, I fell off a motorbike in Vietnam and got my arm plastered for three weeks. Since I obviously couldn't run full speed, I walked the whole 10 kilometers. And quite surprisingly, this was one of the best decisions I ever made because I was able to really see the surroundings and interact with the people watching the marathon. There's so many Korean kids running and there's so many spectators! It's absolutely amazing, wow! After the marathon, we went to see the Party Foundation Monument which was constructed to commemorate 50 years of workers' party rule. Later in the evening, we went to the Juche Tower, which is the tallest stone tower in the world, standing at 150 meters. We were the last people allowed to go in for the day, because it was already too late. But the view from the top was simply breathtaking. The next morning, the real tour started. We were taken to a kindergarten, where the kids performed a dance for us, and eventually invited all the tourists to dance along. During our days in Korea, we'd be having our lunches and dinners in different locations. I've always wanted to find a dragon somewhere in the world, and I cannot believe that I finally did find one in North Korea. As you can see behind my back. But in every single one of them, the waitresses would sing the same songs and invite the tourists to sing and dance with them. This was the first time we saw locals at a restaurant and some people thought they came there for a reason. We would visit universities, schools and other learning centers almost every day. A lot of the students had to perform for us and some of them were apparently really well practiced. At one particular middle school, one young student kicked my ass at table tennis. However, back at the hotel, I was the king of the table. Sweet revenge. One of the days, we went on a tram ride around Pyongyang. That was one of the highlights of the trip because we were finally able to see at least a little bit of the local way of life. The funny thing was that in every carriage there were some colorful notes full of the leader's ideas, thoughts and advices for the people. We also visited some ancient sites, small towns, parks, cafes, the demilitarized zone between the two Koreas and many other places. So we just came to a pizza restaurant in Pyongyang and it looks like a nice pizza place. So apparently I just found a Snickers bar at a hotel in Korea, which is extremely interesting. But then the best thing, I discovered this local rice drink. There was rice at the bottom of the bottle and you need to mix it to, I don't know, have the drink ready. But it's really good. Thank you very much. Anytime you come. Yes, good bartender. Probably the most interesting day was the last day of my trip, which was also the birthday of their eternal president, Kim Il-sung. 
In the morning, we went to pay our respects and bow for the biggest dear leader statues in all of North Korea. The birthday of Kim Il-sung is a national holiday where people do not have to go to work, but every North Korean has to go and show their respects to the leader statues close to their communities. Afterwards, we went to see how hundreds of Korean women practice a beautiful dance wearing their national dresses. to go into a theme park nearby where we took a real roller coaster ride. I'm uh, at an amusement park in North Korea and I'm gonna go on a roller coaster now. So let's see how it goes. Pretty exciting. The ride was very basic, but it was still a very interesting experience to be able to go on a roller coaster ride in North Korea. However, after this one, we were not allowed to go on any other rides and had to leave the theme park. <laughs> after an awesome lunch, our guide said that we will be able to go to a park where only the local people hang out. So we're at a public park in North Korea with a lot of local people just uh, having fun. I was very surprised to see literally thousands of people dancing. <laughs> Throughout the whole trip, we didn't have any chance to talk with the local people, except for our two North Korean guides. This was as close as we ever got to them, but even then there was no communication between us. After the park, our guides wouldn't tell us where we were going. They simply said it was a surprise. We went on a large yak from which we saw some spectacular fireworks. The seven days I spent in North Korea have been some of the most interesting and mind-opening days in my entire life. To be honest, the country looked a lot better than I had imagined, though obviously I was only shown what they wanted me to see. My guides were wonderful and friendly people who seemed to truly love their country and especially the dear leaders. But all the rules and limitations were way too much to handle. I remember for days after I left North Korea, I couldn't believe I could do whatever I wished. Even buying groceries or taking a cab seemed like great privileges. To me, freedom is everything. Freedom to choose what to work, what to read, where to go and where to live. It was sad to realize that millions of people do not share the same freedom simply because they were born in a different place.